So sorry about all the techie looking stuff in the background, but this is the area that I, I do a lot of my work in and all of this stuff is actually uh, things that I do for work when it comes to access control, video surveillance, uh, things of that sort. But today I was actually wanting to go ahead and talk about the, um, the stuff that I've been doing with my fish tanks. I'm, I've got a little bit of an experiment going on right now. And back in December, I was uh, emailing with uh, Richard Thu, also known as uh, the Pawn Guru. I think that's how I say his name. If I'm mispronouncing it, I hope he'll correct me. Um, but I was asking him a little bit about Biohome, which is a product that he helped design and he sells. And I got hooked up with Don Chamberlain, who is uh, the guy from Great Wave Engineering here in the United States that is a distributor for uh, the Biohome product. And what Biohome is, is a centered glass uh, media for being able to do your uh, biological filtration in a fish tank uh, in a little bit of an interesting way. You know, the entire point of biological filtration in a fish tank is that there's um, media that has uh, plenty of surface area for the bacteria to grow and uh, so many people try and accomplish it in a lot of different ways. Biohome does centered glass which ends up making it to where it's got tons and tons of surface area all down inside. I reached out to them to see about being able to do some testing that I was going to uh, kind of mess with a little bit of a, a, an internal sump design on a tank uh, fill it up with some biohome and really kind of do some independent testing to see if it really would not only uh, filter biologically for the ammonia, the nitrite, and take it to nitrate, but if it would also do what they say of being able to reduce the nitrates that are in the tank by being able to do denitrifying bacteria inside. They actually agreed to give me a little bit of it if I would uh, you know, kind of monitor my results. So I started off on going ahead and making myself the tank that I wanted to, and uh, unfortunately, I ended up actually shattering that tank when I was getting ready to go on a trip at the very beginning of the year. I was packing up some stuff near where I had that workspace for the tank, and I put the side of a Pelican case right into it and shattered it. Kind of sat for a while. I've purchased another tank to be able to rebuild that one. You know, take two broken tanks, make them one, no big deal. However, in the meantime, my wife set up a uh, very small little two and a half gallon um, a tank that she was wanting to use for shrimp. And very quickly, the population of that shrimp, shrimp tank started to outgrow what the tank could hold. So we ended up sourcing a 10 gallon to be able to do. And I went ahead and started moving forward with doing the internal uh, uh, sump in that tank to be able to do these tests since it's one that I knew that I could go ahead and bring up and bring to life. The rest of this video is purely um, some of the stuff that's showing the cycling process of that tank whereas of today um, this is August 15th so as of today August 15th the tank has finally reached full cycle when it comes to what most people consider full cycle and that is where uh, there is no ammonia no nitrites and there are nitrates something that's interesting with the results on this though is I've been constantly feeding this tank and I would expect that there to be a lot of nitrates or there to be a need for doing a water change to be able to remove some of those nitrates and already I'm seeing low results on nitrates and I've seen the nitrates move up and then come down and then go up and come down as I've been going through the cycling. So even though we're only a month and a half into this testing, uh, I am seeing what appears to be a good uh, nitrate reduction uh, in this tank. We're gonna do a really high speed unboxing of the package that they sent me. And then I'm gonna stop here and he sent me a little bit of foam to make sure that I was using something that would filter small enough so that baby shrimp wouldn't uh, end up down inside of uh, the filter media. And it was really uh, kind of him to go ahead and send that as something extra for me as well. And here I'm looking at the, the biohome media in the package that he sent. And uh, this is one kilogram, which uh, was calculated out to be the size that I needed actually for the uh, 29 gallon tank that I was going to be doing 
I ended up putting all of this in a 10. So I'm basically filtering it at three times what it should be in the end. We're gonna be way over filtering uh, this tank and it should in the end give us uh, what the result we're looking for. Quick fast forward again, and we're gonna be looking at what's inside the package. Uh, along with the media, they actually sent this, uh, these little balls that are full of bacteria. They're kind of little squishy things that you go ahead and put them inside of the filter when you're setting the entire thing up. And it slowly dissolves over time and it is seeding your, uh, your uh, material with uh, the bacteria that's needed to be able to complete the nitrogen uh, cycle. And uh, supposedly it has all the bacteria that's needed. It takes a little while to get going, but then uh, in the end, it gives you a fantastic result. Uh, Don also sent me a letter that uh, was kind of going through a, a thing that was, uh, you know, hey, I hope that uh, this makes it to where you can do what you need to do for the testing as well as him uh, You know again encouraging me on uh, my fish keeping journey and there's also information about the fact that if you use um, uh, Water treatment uh, That a lot of people use such as prime Which is what I've been using in most of my tanks for getting rid of chlorines and chloramine that it could actually uh, create an issue for being able to get the 100% full cycle and have denitrifying bacteria. And he suggested that I use um, API stress coat instead. So for this tank, um, I'm using API stress coat to treat the water. This is the first tank that I've had where I go through and uh, actually use stress coat instead of prime. So it's a little bit of a, a test of multiple things for me. I sewed together a mesh bag that I then went ahead and put all of the media inside of, and I made this bag so that it would fit perfectly into the section of the tank that I'd built. From there, it was simple as uh, going ahead and taking the tank that it was already set up, uh, that I was actually already feeding with uh, some food at that point to start building up some ammonia, and dropping that little bag of material down inside of the chamber that I'd set up for being able to take the media. Um, in uh, doing this entire thing, I kind of wish that I had uh, planned it just a little bit wider. I mean, not much, but just a little bit wider to make it uh, easier to fit the media down inside of the tank. But once I got it in there and uh, the little filter balls are up on top of inside of there, I put my uh, sponge uh, media back in front of it so that it would filter everything and started feeding the tank and testing. So you've followed me through the journey of where I've uh, put this tank together, put everything in it, and have started the cycling process. And we've gotten to that point where we have no ammonia, no nitrite, and we do have some nitrate. Uh, again, I have not done a single water change on that 
uh, tank in a month and a half as I've been feeding it constantly every single day. And if you notice, it's you know not sitting horrible on its uh, nitrate level. It's sitting at about 10. Um, I'm going to end up doing another follow-up on this where we go through and see how long it takes if it actually gets rid of all the nitrate in the tank. But here soon, the shrimp are going to be moving into that tank and it's going to be alive and uh, supporting the life of uh, the shrimp. And then we'll see how well it does from there. Anyway, thanks for watching.